Levi Stevenson on the line, talking Iowa State football, a force to be reckoned with under Matt Campbell in the Big 12, coming off a 5-4 and four campaign. But as we've mentioned in previous conversations with Levi, in each and every game, uh, in conference play at least, and uh, looking for better things here in 2020. In reviewing the defense, Levi, the thing that stands out to me in reviewing the stat log from last year is you rarely see this. There is contribution all over the place. Typically, you've got two guys that peak in tackles for loss and sacks, you know, 12 tackles for loss, eight sacks, mm-hmm. guys, yep. and then it dwindles from there. you got a couple of playmakers. Here, it's it's all over the place. There's got to be 10 or 12 guys that are in the four or five plus tackle for loss range and then multiple sacks as well. Oh, they, especially over the last couple of years, um, it's very un, it's wildly uncommon to see less you know less than twenty players make a tackle in a game. I think it was last year. There's like between the last two seasons, I think I've seen at least that I can think of off the top of my head, maybe four or five games where they had twenty four people or more make a tackle um, because they the defense is so deep um, at the corner spot. They, they play tons of safeties. They play linebackers. Um, they play, you know, the defensive end group is, is really deep and I'm sure we'll, we can talk about it now, or we can talk about it in about five minutes, but the defensive end group is really deep this year. Um, defensive tackle, they've been running two full, they've been running, you know, a couple guys, obviously with the three down front, you've only been running two defensive tackles, but they'll probably continue to do that, to do that. You know, especially if they go to a four down front this year, you'll probably see even more defensive tackles, um, defensive ends. You'll probably see six to eight of them, eight, six to eight different defensive ends play throughout the game. Linebackers, you'll see four or five or even six. Defensive backs, I mean, you'll probably see, you'll probably see ten or twelve of them um, throughout the game, even making tackles. You know, they don't they don't play anybody if they don't think they can. You know, they're going to get in there and contribute. So if you, you know, if you see a guy on the field in that defense, you're expected to go there and um, you're not you're not just taking space. You're there to make a play. Um, and you know, part of the unique thing about Iowa State's defense too is that the way they swarm to the ball on the outside with the safeties is that even you know. Ordinarily, if you see safeties leading a team, you know, leading a team in tackles, that's ordinarily a very bad thing. Um, but the way Iowa State's defense is set up, that's not a bad thing. Greg Eisworth has always been near the top of the team in tackles. Uh, Braxton Lewis is always up there. Um, you know, guys that you know, he obviously won't be. He's, he graduated, but Greg Eisworth is back. Um, <clears throat> you see those guys uh, coming up. They're making tackles at the line of scrimmage because that's the way the defense is built. Um, they'll probably make adjustments this year. And maybe it won't be that way, but. The defense is, is really deep. They play 22, 23, sometimes 25 guys during the game, and they're all they'll all get in there and they'll get tackles, get tackles for losses and and hopefully sacks. Which certainly um, helps uh, productivity if you have some injury losses because yeah. guys are used to being on the field, and also graduation losses as well. But if there are any concerns, or not necessarily concerns, but voids here from who's moved on. And then maybe some guys that you expect to have a bigger impact this fall. Uh, who would those guys be? So the 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 only glaring question on the defense is the defensive tackle spot. The defensive ends, like I said, are great, and honestly, they may use some of those guys to, and 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 shift them inside a little bit to get kind of a speed rushing type of line. They certainly may do that, and and that you know maybe that fixes the entire problem. Um, but you lose Ray Lima and Jamal Johnson, both two very, very good defensive tackles, two of the best in the country at their at what they do. Um, you lose both of those guys, um, <clears throat> which you know it, it ordinarily would be a big void. There's some, there's like I said, there's talent there. Um, it's young. It's it's it, kind of like the offensive line too, especially defensive tackle. You want to get some experience in there. Now they've uh, pulled in a couple of really nice players. Latrell Bankston won the won the JUCO Defensive Player of the Year, I believe, at the defensive defensive tackle spot. And uh, Willis Singleton is a very, very talented um, another another nose tackle that he's at an Illinois freshman. And I would guess that both of them will probably get playing time. Um, Isaiah Lee's been sitting back there being patient, waiting his turn. Um, obviously, you know, can't get a lot of reps in there when you're only playing one defensive tackle throughout most of the game. Um, but he's he's played uh, before in his career, played not as much last year, but two years ago as a, as during his red shirt year, he got some good playing time. Um, so, you know, that would be the that would be the concern, but the way the defense is built, um, they in with the personnel they have, they could certainly move. There's a couple of defensive ends off, you know, and like any Wazarike and uh, Tucker Robertson that they would do just fine if they moved him inside as a defensive tackle. If you move to a four down front, you could just play one actual true defensive tackle nose tackle, and then run three defensive ends. I think they would be very successful at that. They've got the personnel to do something like that. 
Um, so that's a that's a that's a hole or a gap that that could be mitigated fairly quickly. And the other one, really, I guess it's not really even necessarily a gap or a question so much as but it's to see what kind of step forward the corners take. Um, Anthony Johnson has all the tools to be a very to be a true true lockdown corner. Atron Young's got lots of experience in the program. Uh, Tavon Kyle showed up at the end of last year that played he played really well. I would expect him to be a factor going forward. Um, and you've got some good young guys. DJ Miller is another one is an, is a, a guy to look out for. Kamani King burned his red shirt last year. I think he played like ten games or something like that. Um, that's another another really nice cor- really nice young corner. Um, they usually run four four to six deep on at corner during the game, and I would expect uh, um, they'll do that again next year because there's plenty of talent there, and you know they've gotten they've all gotten snaps as really young players. And now they're now they're sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and I'd expect them to take a jump forward. And if they do, um, we should see kind of a return of not just a good Iowa State defense, but a a really really good staunch Iowa State defense that's that's suffocating like it was a couple of years ago. Please like, comment, share the videos, and subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We're joined by SB Nation's uh, Levi Stevenson. Join him on Wide Right Natty Light covering Iowa State Athletics. Uh, so the the improvement under Matt Campbell is significant, obviously. But now we're in a three-year cycle of four to five wins in the Big 12, seven to eight wins overall. Is there hope, reasonable hope, that the next step is coming? Yeah, I would say for sure, uh, because as we alluded to, or not alluded to, but as we had mentioned before, uh, the new strength and conditioning program, which is a, I think it's, if you talk to any co- anybody that's played college football, they'll say you the head coach and then the strength and conditioning coach are the two most, you know, that's like one and two for things that you need to have in order for your program to be successful. And uh, obviously, I would say it's got the head coach, the strength and conditioning wasn't up to par. Um, but now everything that we've been hearing is it is up to par and better. Um, and that's something that can take, you know, you know, that should improve the offensive line quite a bit, which has honestly been the biggest bugaboo for the last couple of years uh, for Iowa State is just not getting good, consistent offensive line play. That's why Dave Montgomery only rushed for whatever, 1,200 yards a senior year instead of like 1,800 just because he just didn't have the offensive line to play behind, um, you know. But that strength and conditioning program, having a, a, you know, being able to get those guys a good foundation from the beginning uh, so they can improve more quickly, I think should help tremendously. Um, so you've got an offensive line foundation going forward that you can finally feel good about that you can build a team around. Um, there's quarterback talent. Obviously, there's tons of it. Rock is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Uh, I would, you know, most, if you see any preseason best QBs in the country list, Brock Purdy will probably end up in the top five of a lot of them. Um, he's undeniably extraordinarily talented. Um, but the guys coming behind them are actually they're, they're starting off at a better place than Brock Purdy was. Um, and, you know, they, they've been recruiting kind of an archetype at Iowa State where you have uh, obviously talented player. But, you know, the the leadership part of it, the the intelligence part of it is a huge, huge factor. That's what's allowed Brock Purdy to be as good as he's been. Um, and the guys coming in, Hunter Deckers and Aiden Bauman, um, are both you know in that same mold where they're the, where they are the kind of the quintessential leaders, the guys that you can rally that you can build a team around um, as far as your locker room presence go and on the field. And, but they're both, I would, I would argue that both of them are more naturally gifted than Brock is, I guess. Um, so if you can see them, you know, make the same, t- same type of jump, the same type of, uh, you know, hit the same type of learning curve that Brock had, um, you know, you're looking at a couple of really, really nice quarterbacks. And the great thing is that you don't have to play them right away. Brock, you know, Brock had to come in during his true freshman year and play eight games or nine games or whatever it was. You know, you don't have Hunter Deckers doesn't have to come in and play during his true freshman year. I mean, save for an injury, knock on wood. Well, Brock Purdy was also last year. He was the first cycling quarterback to start every single game since 2009, which is something. Um, but he did it. And, you know, his durability has been very good. He did it on two bum ankles. So that'd be, you know, that'd be good having him come back. Um, but he's shown he's got the durability to do it. He's quality guy that you don't you feel like he's never like he's not going to slump off or anything like that. So. So you probably will not have to play Hunter Deckers or Aiden Bauman during their true freshman year. That gives them a whole year to, you know, become ingrained in the culture to learn from Brock. Now, hopefully they'll have, hopefully they have two years of Brock. Maybe they only have one. Who knows? But you know, even one year of learning under Brock Purdy is a good is a good year spent. Um, so you've got the talent there. You've got lots of talent at the at the skill position that's going to be there for a long time. And you've got the foundation. The defense is going to be very good. There's there's talent all over the place there. You've finally got to the place where 
Iowa State is no longer fielding, you know, half you know half of the offense and half of the defense is like really good, solid Big Twelve quality players, and the rest of them are kind of fill ins. Now you're talking about where you've got Big Twelve quality throughout your entire two deep, and then you've got some really truly elite players at you know sprinkled throughout the skill positions and stuff like that. I mean, it's not like an Alabama or an Ohio State where you've got blue chippers all the way across the board, and you know it's, you know three deep into your depth chart. Um, but they've got, as far as just truly all conference level, you know, maybe, you know, fringe all American level players, you know, three or four or five of them sprinkled out, you know, sprinkled throughout each side of uh, each side of the ball. You know, I would say it's in a really good place and they've got a really good foundation where um, it's, you know, it's not just, I don't, I don't, wouldn't expect them to just fall off a cliff for any time soon or anything like that. I mean, I think going forward a bowl game minimum being the X being the absolute bare minimum expectation. I think we've gotten to that point now. Um, where it's not just, oh, we hope to make a bowl game. It's we expect to make a bowl game. And if we only win six or seven games, it's a bit of a disappointment. Um, so I think, you know, seven games should be kind of your threshold. You push for eight or nine or maybe even 10, depending on what kind of talent you bring in. But um, I would say it's in a really good place right now.